to spit in God's eye. Episode 3, Loyalty. While investigating a murder, District Investigator Kayla Knox has come to believe that her sage Abe is under threat from rival sage Beck. As she escapes from an undercover visit to Beck HQ and races to convince Abe to grant asylum to the only person who knows the details of the plot, she's mowed down by a remotely piloted hover car and beaten by a thug who warns her not to talk to Abe. I'm worried, Doc. She's not herself. She was beaten brutally and still all she could think about was Abe. Loyalty conditioning. All shards receive it. Usually it stays at the subconscious level and prevents any open rebellion. I've heard stories. So basically she's been programmed? We're all programmed to an extent, even norms. From the moment we're born, we're taught how to act by society rewarded for conforming, and punished when we go out of bounds. The difference between norms like me and shards like you and Kayla is that shards receive specific training, designed to make you loyal and suggestible to your sage on a subconscious level. This is a sudden change for her, though, ever since she met with Abe. Well, sages have special auditory or visual signals they can use to trigger different levels of control. Or like in Kayla's case, trigger an all-out devotion in a shard. Very useful if you're a sage, I suppose. Can we turn the damn thing off? Doc, I'm worried for her. No, don't. I need to save Abe. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do for her. This trigger is like an explosion, not like a light switch. It only goes one way. That's how the sages designed it. Good, we need to help Abe. Bex Thug did this to me to try to stop me from saving Abe. You should be more worried about yourself. You're so badly brainwashed, you die for him. Abe's life matters more than mine. Please, let me go to him now. You've got two cracked ribs and a mild concussion. You're lucky it wasn't worse. Sit still. Dr. Stone, Hachi, please, I need to talk- To Abe, yeah, I got it. Abe is a wonderful, mystical creature made of rainbows and happy faces, and it's your most fervent hope to grovel at his feet and lick his toes clean. If he has feet in that egg of his. Doc, isn't there something we can do for her? Or just sedate her again? Another sedation so soon isn't recommended. We could compromise. Letting her call HQ could calm her compulsion before it drives her past her breaking point, without endangering her too much. Yes, let me call. Fine. You can use my phone. Who is this? District Investigator Kayla Knox, I need- Knox? Where the hell are you? Hospital. Beck tried to stop me from warning Abe. Listen, you have to- This line is unsecured. That doesn't matter. Violet Hastings needs asylum by tomorrow or Beck will kill Abe. That's impossible. More impossible than a team of dead heavies? More impossible than a hover car purposely knocking me out of the sky and a heavy delivering a violent message from Beck to stop me from warning you about this? Just who is this Violet Hastings, and why does she need asylum? One of Beck's best genetic researchers. She created a gene for human gills. She learned of Beck's plans and warned her cousin just before Provender was murdered. Beck has terrorized her, and she wants out, but she's too afraid to tell us about Beck's plans until she's safely in Abe HQ. And she says we only have one more day until Beck acts. I suppose we could give her a job and hear what she has to say. You'll vouch for her? Yes! We'll send an agent to extract her right away. Thank you, Madam Chair. Come to HQ as soon as you can. Abe will want to debrief you personally. I'm going to HQ now. Abe needs to debrief me. Well, Doc, letting her have the phone sure didn't help. Over the objections of Doc Stone, I dragged myself out of bed and caught an auto cab to HQ. I was walking down the hall toward Abe's elevator when a passing heavy caught my eye. When you've worked with as many heavies as I have, you learn how to tell them apart. I knew I'd seen him before, and quickly I registered where. As soon as I got safely into the elevator, I placed an urgent call to Gary. Supervisor Gary Rice speaking. How may I help you? It's Kayla. Shouldn't you be resting in hospital? 
Your location says you're in HQ. Listen, Gary, I just saw the heavy who beat me up last night. Here, in HQ. Are you sure about that? They all look alike to me. I'm absolutely sure. But what would Bex Thug be doing in HQ? Just walking down a hall with his squad. That makes no sense. Are you alright, Kayla? I'm fine. But Abe won't be if we don't act on this. It's one of Beck's thugs, and he's not just in our HQ, but in our inner security ring. He could be a spy, a saboteur, or an assassin, and he's certainly up to some kind of no good. Did you get his badge number? PGK-327. Alright. I'll order his squad mates to escort him to a cell, and I'll inform the eaters right away. Thanks, Gary. You take care of yourself, Kayla. Abe's office, please. Reporting to serve you, my sage. Approach. I fear for you, my sage. One of the thugs who beat me last night has infiltrated HQ. Supervisor Rice is having him arrested. Don't concern yourself with that, my child. We'll take care of it. But Beck's plot against you. We need to get Violet to tell us the details before Beck can act. I am safe, and my revenge on Beck is close at hand. How far do you think we can trust this defector, Violet Hastings? I trust her completely. She's very afraid. She needs help. She's a skilled geneticist? Well, I I think she... Wait, spinning. Can't. Peters, send two medics to my office to carry District Investigator Knox back to hospital. I felt the world fading. I found myself floating above the streets, aimlessly, out of control. Crowds of norms were gathering, staring up at me, pointing and laughing at the helpless freak. I drifted gently through the wall of a building and found myself in district security. I called out to the nearest bug eye. Bug eye, what's going on? I am not authorized to tell you anything. And I saw Gary. Gary, why am I being kept in the dark? Don't worry, Kayla. We have it all under control. There's no need for you to be involved. And I floated through another wall and found myself looking down on the body of Hal Provender. He raised his arm, slowly, out of the pool of blood, and pointed a finger up at me. And I slipped away into a deep blackness. Later I became vaguely aware of voices around me, and once I opened my eyes and saw my friend Zephyr standing over me before I fell back into a deep sleep. The next morning I awoke fully, still a bit worse for wear, but ready to get to work. Hi Kayla, it's good to have you back. It's good to be back, Gary. So what's on the agenda for today? Has Violent Hastings explained the plot against Abe? Is Bex Heavy ready for me to interview him? You get to write a report. Peters wants a written account of everything that happened to you since the second you saw Provender's body. A report? Seriously? Our sage's life is in danger? Beck may be acting today and you want me to write a report. I'm taking you off the case. We'll handle it from here. Believe me, Abe is safe. We just need your final report. You can't do that. I'm your supervisor. But believe me, I didn't take this decision lightly or alone. Abe himself thought it would be best. It's for your own good. Abe would never. You'll get full credit for all the great work you've done. I'm recommending you for promotion. I don't want a promotion. I want to protect my sage from an imminent threat and find out who murdered Provender. Our sage has plenty of protection. You'll have to respect his wishes. Take it easy. 
I can't believe this is happening. Aren't you at least going to tell me what Violet said Beck is going to do? That's classified. Need to know basis. You're not on the case anymore. I've got to go to a planning meeting about the retaliatory raid into Beck's district now. Write down every detail you can remember, Kayla. Don't leave anything out. At least you won't get hit over the head again sitting in the office. I felt betrayed. Was this Gary's decision or Abe's decision? Clearly, Gary hadn't fought it. There wasn't much I could do about it for the moment, so I sat down to compose my report. First, I wrote out every detail I could remember of what happened. Then I added my analysis of the situation, the factors that pointed to Beck's involvement, and the deductions I'd made regarding his motivations. It should have been an easy, simple, mundane task. And yet, once I wrote it all down, recent events no longer made sense. Why would Beck have sent a secret cloaked assassin to hide his involvement, only to then dump the heavies from a van with a Beck ID plate in front of Abe HQ? No sage could be that stupid. But then who could be responsible? I needed to talk over my thoughts with someone. This is Hachi's personalized away message. You again, Kayla? Look at the time. Bet you I'm at work. Sorry if you desperately need my wise counsel, but... I gotta cook fish for customers. Leave a message after the random animal noise. Hachi, pick up your damn phone. Why are all my friends turning on me today? <sighs> Zephyr? Hi, Kayla. What can I do for you? I need some feedback on my case. I don't think Beck could have been behind the murders, and I'm afraid I might have put Ava in terrible danger. But I can't tell my supervisors until I'm sure I'm not making a fool of myself, because I'm the one who convinced them to trust Violet and insist that Abe's life depended on Violet just yesterday. I really don't have any idea what you're on about. You should talk to Hachi. I tried. He's at work and won't answer. Is there anyone you can talk to who knows this Violet person's character and motivations better than you do? Hmm. You know, I should really visit her cousin again. Thanks, Zephyr. Investigator Knox, what are you doing here? Did you know your cousin requested asylum and defected to Abe? Yeah, I heard. How did that strike you? Really weird. First I'd heard of her wanting to get away from Beck. Couldn't she have defected because she wanted to save Abe? Violet? <laughs> Maybe ten years ago. She used to look up to sages, but lately she's had nothing but contempt for them. Says they're useless, says they're spoiled monsters playing God with our lives. She's bitter because they couldn't cure her. I know she hates Abe most of all. Can't understand her upending her life to run off and save him. I need to understand Violet. What makes her tick? What motivates her? Violet suffered a lot from her anxiety. Lost a lot of jobs, couldn't hold on to friends or lovers. She can't even find peace alone at home. The anxiety won't even let her sleep. She held out hope for a long time. She saw other people get better and thought for sure the next treatment would do it for her too, but now she's just bitter. These days I think the bitterness is what makes her tick. Could she be dangerous? She's the methodical sort, not prone to violent outbursts. Dangerous to whom? To Abe. Ah, uh, well she hates his guts and she doesn't have a lot left to live for, so maybe. But if that's what she's up to, you can be sure she'll have a plan laid out in advance that you're not going to be able to stop. We'll see about that. Gotta run. And that's why the laser depot would not be a good story. Gary, where's Violet Hastings? Investigator Knox, don't interrupt the meeting. Violet is not your concern. It's not your case. To hell with you lot then. May Abe have mercy.
Research Department. Excuse me, where can I find Violet Hastings? Hastings? Oh, she's the new one. The odd duck who never leaves her office. Second door in the left, down that hall. Thank you. Violet, don't. Don't move. I'll use this if you make me. Is that a weapon? A bomb. Stay there. Stay where you are. If I drop, drop it, it'll take the whole building. Go find us. I've taken care of everything. Violet. Violet, talk to me. Why are you doing this? You have no idea what it's like. I'm afraid all, all the time. I'm constantly worried about, about everything. It consumes me until I can't eat. I can't sleep. All I can do is obsess over every little mistake until I'm... I'm nothing but a mistake. Beck? Beck did this to you? Like Abe did to you? Uh, but no, not Beck. Mentron. Far from here. He's a sage who experiments mentally like Abe does physically. He messed up. Uh, Abe messed up your body... Mentron messed up my mind. I can help you. I can find you a doctor. You can get better. <laughs> you think I tried that? I tried medication. Didn't work. Therapy? It was useless. They help others, but nobody helps me. That's, that's why I wrote to the Council of Sages. Beg them to help. They're super geniuses. They should have been able to... to do something... They turned you away? Much worse. They treated me like a joke. They sent me to Beck. How is that a joke? Because Beck is a joke, Knox. Beck's a cripple. A prisoner in his shell who can't even speak. That's... That's... Impossible. Beck is... He's... A powerless figurehead. Figurehead who millions of sheep still think of as a god. But I, I was so desperate I talked to him anyway. His mind still works. I thought of a code. A code that let us communicate the one way he still can. Blinking his eyes. He helps me design a bomb. This bomb. That I can get past security scans. Because he wanted you to kill Abe? Huh. Beck helped me build the bomb so I could kill Beck. Death, death is the only thing he thinks about these days. That's why I decided I can't let him have it. And I'm killing Abe instead. Abe is a great man, more than a man, and he loves us all. It's not too late. Let him forgive you. <laughs> oh boy, you're really badly brainwashed, aren't you? Uh, Abe, Abe is a monster who created shards with horrific disabilities to suffer and die for his own petty end. It's time the gods learned how to suffer with their creations. I'm not God. The people who will die if you set off this bomb, they're not God either. Hand it over. But God loves you even if Abe doesn't. Killing myself would make God blink. He's never cared about me. Maybe if his more beloved creations suffer, he'll finally take notice of everything that's gone wrong and come down to fix things. Kill me if you want. Kill everyone else if you have to. But spare Abe. Abe is your God. Abe and Beck are the gods of this city. If I can't reach the real gods, I'll take revenge on the local gods. Detonator armed. Preston can count down. Wait! How do you like it? How do you like fear, Knox? What you feel now is what I feel every day. Remember that. Remember that. Wait! No. No more waiting. Ten. It was now or never. I made a desperate lunge for Violet, hoping I could somehow grab the bomb and figure out a way to stop it in the few seconds left. She sidestepped me and brought something heavy down on my head. Four. Can't. Three. Move. Two. Two. One. One. Is this finally the explosive end for Kaylin Ox and the rest of Abe HQ? Is Abe a hero or a villain? Will justice prevail or all-out war? 
all will be answered in the final episode. To Spit in God's Eye is based on a story by Firestar, adapted, produced, and directed by Paul Nero, starring Kylie as Kayla Knox. John Hastings was played by Splendid Bob. Hachi was Jeff Lobovici. Curie Rice in Zombie Hell were played by Paul Nero. Abe was John Allen Gotts. Suzanne Peters was played by Firestar. Doc Stone and Bug Eyes were played by Steph. Violet Hastings was played by Lindsay Townsend. Genetic researcher was Pike Elm. Zephyr was Sir Marwena Tigerblade the Dead Porter. Rock Slide is the ball. The announcer is Paul Nero. Music courtesy freebd.com. Sound effects courtesy freesound.org. This program is licensed for free use and redistribution without alteration. Available on the web at quietpleaseorg forward slash spit.